Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to another exciting edition of Fun in the Woods. Now wait a minute, Fun in the Basement. <laughs> right. A while back I did a video called um, Why All Hikers Should Carry a Compass. And I showed a method for if you get lost, how to become unlost. And of course a method for how to avoid getting lost in the first place. Well, the comments on that video if I remember right, I think I got 1,100 comments on that. So that was a pretty popular subject. And it was a lot of people that they said that after watching the video, they said that uh, they were convinced they should carry a compass. And uh, I got a lot of video, I mean a lot of comments where they said that they didn't know how to use one. But they was going to carry one anyway and it was going to learn. So, I got to searching around looking and uh, there, was, there was a request for a compass video. And I got to searching around and I got to looking at some of the videos because I thought there's a lot of compass videos out there. And when I got to looking at them, a lot of them are kind of confusing. And then when I got to thinking about how I would do a video, and then I got to kind of struggling with it thinking, man, how do you make it easy to understand? <laughs> so this is going to be my vain attempt at getting you to understand, I mean truly understanding a compass. Because to me, there's two keys to a compass, okay? One, you have to understand it. You have to understand how it works. You have to understand the simple fact that that little red needle always points towards magnetic north. And then the other thing is, is you have to learn to trust your readings. Sound good? Fair enough? All right, well, let's dive into this. And we're going to start out by, I'm going to show you the the different parts of the compass and the two different kinds. I'll go over that real quick and then before we go into the how to use a compass in the navigation I'm gonna I'm gonna scribble something on a dry erase board about direction and hopefully that will clear everything up so that everything I say in the later in the video will be a lot easier to understand. Let's take a look at the different kind of uh, compasses now. This is what they call a, a base plate compass or a map compass. And, there, and, and this is an orienteering compass. The one that's got a mirror and it's got a little sight hole in it. Now the base plate compass is made, the ones with the clear bottoms, they're made to set on the map because you can see through them. And they've got these scales on each side. And most of them have what's called meridian lines see all these lines going across here sometimes some people call them grid lines but some call them meridian lines and see that way you can line them up on your map I mean it wasn't on there see that way you can line these up with the grid lines or on the map or meridian lines and see that way you can do things with it like turn the map and stuff like that but this video we're not we're not concentrating we're not going to be talking much about maps and uh we're not going to be using these type of compasses here. We're going to be using the orienteering compass because the idea behind this video is to be orienteering. Now this one, see this has got a gray, gray bottom on it. And this has got a clear bottom on it with a mirror. So this is kind of like a combination of both. Now the parts of these things here, every compass, let's show you the good one. Every compass has your direction of arrow, now it's not clearly marked on this one, it's just understood that it's here. Here it's clearly, clearly marked. Your direction of arrow is usually printed on the base plate. See, this has got one too, the red thing right there. That's the, the direction of travel. Here's another example. It's printed right on the base plate. Okay, direction of travel. Okay, we got that part clear. Now, the red part right here, that is the magnetic needle. All right, the red end of it always points north. See the two of these right here? And incidentally, if um, anything metal, let me show you something. Don't ever get anything metal near it. Don't ever get a, don't ever get a knife or a, a belt buckle or a button collar or anything near it because it'll affect it. There it goes, see? Now, if you get it real close like that, chances are you won't be touching it. That really screws it up. But as you can see, when I'm going around it like that, 
it kind of follows. So that's something you got to pay attention to. Because a friend of mine said one time he set a map on the ground and put his machete beside it and kept getting weird readings, and he didn't know why. All right, so I'm already I'm already being myself and being off track, but that's something important to know. Now <clears throat> that is the magnetic north needle. Now this red arrow right here is called the orienteering arrow not to be confused with the direction of travel arrow see same thing right here see the red arrow that's the orienteering arrow that's what you always line up with north all right well, no matter how you turn this compass you're always going to line that north now the name for that is called red in the shed that's how you remember that because some people get confused because you've got this arrow here, you got magnetic needle and direction of travel. Red in the shed. That's how you're going to line up always. Always remember that. And this compass here, it's got some meridian lines here too, so that you can use it on a on a map. This is it's got meridian lines. Now on the bezel, this bezel rotates. And that's got a lot to do with how you're um, how you're going to be uh, taking bearings. Now bearings is simply where what direction you're going okay and it's like if i was going north what i would do is i would put north in my direction of travel and then i would line up my arrow so what i would mean is then i would walk this direction if i was going south which incidentally south would be returning from camp then what you do is you would line up Remember what I said, red in the shed. Then you'd be walking back the other direction. Okay? Now, so that's your rotating bezel. The little red things inside here, let's see right here, right on here. The little red things in here. Wait, one thing before I get into that, I want to show you something here real important. On compasses, this has only got north marked. Everything else is degrees. This has absolutely nothing marked. You have to know that zero is north, 180 is south, 90 is east, and west is 270. So that could be a little bit more confusing. That's one of the reasons why I love this compass. Because this has got north, south, east, west. It's even got northeast and northwest and southeast. They're all marked. That's wonderful. I love that. Uh, now, before I got confused right here, this other little scale up here, see these little numbers up in here? That's the declination scale. That's for setting declination. And that's something that when we hit the dry erase board, I'm going to explain about magnetic declination. But it doesn't necessarily apply to this video. But those are the parts of the compass, and those are the things that you need to know, the main things you need to know. See, this one's got some scales across it, too, and a little magnifying lens. Now, let's hit this uh, dry erase board over here, and I'm going to try to simplify direction now that you know the parts of the compass, and then I'll show you how to use the compass. I knew I'd find a use for this old lid right here at some point in time. <laughs> so let's draw us a circle right here. All right. There's a circle. Now, what we have to understand, this is what I'm explaining about direction. All right. All maps that I know of, pretty much all maps that are ever made, straight up is considered north. That is called true north. All right, make sense? True north, all right. Down is always south. To your right is always east, and then west. Okay, that's understood. I think most of you understand this, but this has to do with direction. Now, this is always, north is always zero degrees, 90 degrees is east, 180, and then 270 degrees. Now, with that being said, let me explain something to you. All circles are 360 degrees, okay? Now, each degree is divided up into 60 minutes. Make sense? So one degree is 60 minutes, a half a degree is 30 minutes, a quarter of a degree is 15 minutes, okay? 
Makes sense? All right. And then if you want to get into, when you get into like uh, geometry and machine shop terminology, you get into seconds. Each minute has 60 seconds. And that's like angles and things and trigonometry and geonome, ge, ge, geometry. But we're not going to get into none of that. But I just want you to be clear on that. Because now, <clears throat> chop this in half and you now have northeast, which is 45 degrees. Okay? Chop this in half and then you have southeast. Okay? Because it's halfway between south and east. So if you got 90 right in the middle of it, you add another 45 degrees, and you're going to be 135. Okay? Same thing with this. This is southwest, and this over here is northwest. Now, this is going to be your, 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 this is the bezel, okay, on how you take your bearings. And your bearings is basically the, the, the distance that you're going to go. Now, to clearly understand this, what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna, I want you to picture in your head for people that don't grasp this. But what this is, is let's say that you're standing here and you wanna go east, it's 90 degrees that way, okay? You wanna go west, it's 270 that way. So let's look at it this way. Think of a baseball field. This is the pitcher's mound, okay? That's the pitcher's mound. This is first base, all right? This is second base. Now wait a minute. <laughs> I have totally screwed that up. <laughs> That's what happens when you're looking at a camera and thinking, this is home plate. <laughs> I almost messed you up. Okay, that's first base. This is second base. And then this is third base. All right? And then I think you've got like this weird looking thing right here. All right? Think of a baseball field. You're on the pitcher's mound. You're always on the pitcher's mound. Now, <clears throat> think of true north as second base. First base is east. Third base, west. That's how this thing's set up, okay? And you've got all these different degrees so that you can travel in all these different locations in between. All right? Clear as mud. All right. That's the deal with the degrees, okay? Now, true north is what's printed on all maps, all maps everywhere you go now magnetic north can vary it varies from location to location and it varies throughout the years so i gotta i gotta hit on that even though this is just a navigation by compass video i have to explain declination okay so we're not going to get into that because that's map reading but i'm going to explain how let's draw us a little circle right here again now, remember how I said that um, all maps, or at least all that I know of, are drawn thinking that nor true north is straight up. Okay, true north. That's, that's what maps are made of. Right up here at the top, let's say you have the, what they call the geographical poles. The north pole and the south pole. Okay, there's the north pole and there's the South Pole. All right, now, that's true north. All maps, everywhere you go, they're drawn with north straight up. And the reason that they do that is so that you can uh, just, it's a standard, and you're gonna kinda understand for a minute. Now, somewhere under the Earth's cut crust or core, there's a some kind of an ore deposit somewhere over here. And it's constantly shifting. Now, that is what a compass is um, attracted to. And depending on your location in the world, okay, there's, there's, and it shifts. So depending on your location in the world, your compass is going to point directly towards it. Okay? Depending on some of the other locations of where you are, your compass is still going to point to it. No matter where your location is. Okay? So, now we're starting to get somewhere. True north is always considered straight up, but depending where you are, your compass is going to be pointing towards magnetic north. Now, we're going to be using magnetic north for our hiking and our navigating, but like I said, I'm going to have to explain this to you. 
And there's a few other things that I'm fixing to explain here in a minute, okay? Now this is my half-hearted attempt at uh, drawing the United States of America. Now before we look at this, all maps, you got to understand, are drawn with the intentions that north is straight up. And a lot of them will have an emblem like this. Okay, north will always be straight up. And that's how you know what you're looking at on a map. Okay, north. They usually look like that. Every once in a while you'll see something like this little blue emblem here. North straight up. Okay. So, let's look at this map now here. This is the United States of America that I have drawn. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's say straight up is true north. No matter where you go, straight up is true north. True north, true north, okay? Because that's how all maps are drawn. Now, there's a thing called the agonic line. And the agonic line is where the, the magnetism lines up perfectly. It's zero degrees. True north and magnetic north lines up. And right now, I believe the agonic line is going somewhere through, somewhere through, Agonic line. A-G-O-N-I-C. That is the Agonic line. It is going somewhere through the border of uh, Louisiana and Mississippi. Okay. And then all these other lines are called Isogonic lines. Alright. You've got all these right here. And they're, they're, they're drawn in a curve shape because the world is round. Okay. At least according to Columbus, it is. <laughs> I think that's who it was, but this ain't a history lesson. <laughs> now, these other lines, they're called isogonic lines. I-S-O-gonic lines, okay? All right, now, enough of the technical stuff. I'm going to hold the compass up here, and I'm going to explain this to you. If you live somewhere along the isogonic line, which is, uh, it's somewhere along, it's somewhere right now between the, uh, Louisiana and uh, Mississippi border, and then it eases on up through Arkansas and Missouri and possibly Iowa and Minnesota. Somewhere in that area, if you're standing there, magnetic north is going to be lining up perfectly zero. Okay. Now, if you're over here, if you're over here on this side, true north is up, but your compass is going to be drawn in this direction towards. This is magnetic north. Okay, is that starting to make sense now? And then if I'm over here, straight up is north, true north, because that's how my, cop, my, my map is drawn, but my compass is going to be pulled over this way. All right? And that's what's called east declination and west declination. Now, it constantly shifts, so you've got to be careful about using these old maps. So let's, let's take All a right, paper. I had to cut the camera off because I wasn't quite ready with the... Uh, I didn't have my glasses. I don't know if this is going to focus in or not, but this map is on the uh, on the internet. There's a bunch of maps like this, and <clears throat> this is an older map because if you'll see this zero degrees, <clears throat> this is the agonic line, okay? And this is such an old map that it's showing it right past the Georgia border, right over into Alabama. Well, see now it's done shifted, and uh, it's all the way over here, in between. Um, in between Louisiana and uh, Mississippi, and see, this is showing a four degree east declination. <clears throat> okay, and it's like now, as it has shifted, see, this is showing two degrees west, and right now it's like four degrees. So, let's show you another thing right here. This is an older map. This is an older map that was printed with a compass that I got. And this is showing de zero degrees. This is such an old map. It's showing it go go uh, directly through Georgia. Now some maps, this is a real old map. This is Chattoogaville, Georgia. I see the date on it, 1967. Now some maps will actually show you the magnetic declination. Now this is actually showing it as being one and a half degrees. And that's not good at all. So you can't go by that. That was that was good from when this map was made. All right. So I'm gonna pull up another website and show you here in just a second. So magneticdeclination.com. And it's pretty cool, okay? So what it does is let's scroll up here and take a look. 
is it's got an interactive map and you can click anywhere on the map. Now let's click over here, uh, this is Somerville, Georgia, so let's click on it, which is also known as Chattoogaville, okay? Now this will give you, gives you your magnetic, magnetic, ma not only does it give you your latitude and longitude, but it gives you your magnetic, current magnetic declination, and it also gives the inclination, okay, which is something else. Now this is showing negative west, negative 4 degrees 35 minutes, so that's pretty much 4, deg four and a half degrees. Now see how important it is that you don't go by old maps. And this is the reason why all maps are printed with true north. Because throughout the years these change. Because remember the older map from 1967 had magnetic declination is one and a half degrees east. This is four degrees 35 minutes. Now the way you use these maps is you take two fingers and you drag it over. So... That was four and a half degrees. So let's go to Scottsboro, Alabama and touch it. And see, that's negative four degrees, nine minutes. That's closer to four minutes. And let's go over here. There's Decatur, Alabama. Spring Valley. See if we can find us a place over here. See, now I think we're getting somewhere closer. Let's go over here to... I don't recognize any of these places. Blue Springs, Chesterville, Jumpertown, Booneville, pulling on over here, Abbeville, make it a little bit smaller here. All right, let's click on one of these other places here. I'm having trouble. Potts Camp. Let's click on that. Now see, now we're getting a little closer. It's negative one degree, 49 minutes west. Okay. Up here, here's Memphis, Tennessee. Let's click on it. See, anywhere you want to go, negative one degree, 20 minutes west. So we, we're getting closer to the Agonic Line. Where are we at? Here's some place called Circe. Or Circe. Oh, look at that. Negative nine minutes west. See, we're fixing to get over closer now. Here's Jacksonville. Here's Little Rock and Jacksonville. Let's click on that. Now see, that switched over to east. Negative six minutes east. So you're starting to get into an area now where the agonic line is showing up. And it's truly zero. And you could even pull this map up north and look at a few more places. See this right here. West Plains. Let's see where that is. See, negative ten degrees west. All right, now that's enough of that right there, okay? I'm fixing to scribble out something to show you why this is important. Now, like I said, this is a compass navigation video, but I'm explaining to you about all this stuff because I don't want somebody complaining, going, you didn't even mention declination, <laughs> which will happen. So, let's say, for example, the reason this is important is because, let's say, for example, you are right here. This is your location, okay? All right, and you, you have a map, and a map is telling you Okay, this is the parking lot. Okay, you have parked your car right here, and you got out, and you got your compass, and you got your map. Okay, you've looked at the true north emblem, and your true north emblem says that north is straight up. All right, so let's take a peek at that now. True north. Let's go right up here. True north. All right, draw a line here. Now this map is claiming that there's a lake over here. Okay. Now this lake is at 63 degrees, and that's what this is saying, okay? So let's say, for example, 63 degrees. Remember what I told you about the circle being, you know, there's 360 degrees in one. You got north, and then east over here is 90 degrees. This is zero degrees, or 360, okay? But let's say that you're in an area that has got uh, seven degree west declination okay in other words you're standing here and your map is saying true north but your compass is being drawn seven degrees this away it's not 70 it's seven <laughs> seven degrees wait a minute I didn't make that too long that's not even on the screen <laughs> seven degrees Okay, you got seven degrees west declination because your compass is being pulled over in that direction. So let's say that you just meandered around and used your compass to go 63 degrees. The thing is, 
is you got to add another seven degrees in it because your compass is going to be wa wanting to be pulled this way. See what I'm saying? So what you're going to have to do is actually you're going to have to set your bearings for 70 degrees if you're using a map. All right, clear as mud. Now, one other thing that I'm going to show you right here, and then we're going to actually get into using the compass. All this confusion is going to stop. Is let's set this thing again. Now, some compasses you can set. Some of them you have to add or subtract the declination. But if you look on here, on the, you turn it around backwards, and this thing actually tells you east declination or west declination. And it's got this little scale on the backside right here. And there's a little screw right here. And what you do is you find out, you go on that website, uh, magneticdeclination.com, and on the end of this little lander, it's got a little teeny tiny screw head and you screw this and you adjust it and so you set it and you never have to worry about adding or subtracting error okay now that's all i'm going to say about the declination part of things because like i said this is a video on navigating with a compass if you understand how to use a compass and that's the thing right there that's 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 what i'm trying to impress is if you know how to use a compass later on, all that other stuff will come easy. So let's go out now and I'm going to show you how to actually use the compass finally. <laughs> well, if you've stayed with me for this long, we're finally going to get down to the nuts and bolts of actually using a compass. But the idea was to understand the compass. So that's the reason why I had to go over all that other stuff, because those are things that you need to know. All right. They don't. You know, they're, they're involved with compass use and they're involved with navigation and maps, but they're, you know, they're, they're not necessarily a part of tr the actual use of the compass, okay, which is what I'm going to show now. Now, the idea behind the compass right here is if you have the type of compass that has the, the mirror in it, okay, now what you want to do is the reason behind having the mirror in it is because if you take a compass and you hold it out in front of you, it's not in line with your eyes and that's why that's why there's the hole right here okay so that you can see through it so what you're going to do is you're going to hold the compass up to your eye level and you're going to lean the mirror over and what you're doing is you're actually using the mirror so that you can see the compass and so what you can do then is you can look like this and it's turning and you can see through this little hole right here. Now I'm going to give you a point of view of it here just in a, in a minute so that you can see. And so what you can do is you can either move around and line up with north. Or when north does line up, then you can move the bezel until it lines up. In other words, there's two ways of using it. It's called taking a bearing or finding a bearing. Okay, And I'll show you both of those here in just a second. All right, I hope you can see this. We're in the dark. Okay, now, remember I said that your direction of uh, travel arrow is up here, all right? And uh, this is your orienteering arrow, and this is your magnetic arrow. This always points towards magnetic north. So, let's say, for example, this is called uh, finding a bearing, okay? Or, or, I don't know, there's different names. There's finding a bearing, uh, spotting a bearing, locating a bearing. Let's just say that we want to travel 310 degrees northwest, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the bevel to 310 degrees. Okay, I want to go 310 degrees. So, what I'm going to do now, okay, I'm going to turn the compass to where it's at eye level, and I'm going to turn it over until I can just see my arrow. Now, if you look, I'm hoping that you can find this. You can see that the, um, the north needle is not lined up with the orienteering arrow okay so that's what you call put fred in the shed or red in the shed so what we're going to do is we're going to turn and hopefully you're seeing that and see that just now lined up and so what we're going to do is we're going to look through this little hole right here and that little hole man it's cold out here you're going to look through that little hole and I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but what I'm doing is I'm picking up that great big old pine tree, okay? Now what this is, is this is called dead reckoning. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my compass, and I have found at 310 degrees 
that is where I need to head to. So I'm going to walk to that tree, and then I'm going to stand behind it, and then I'm going to pick out another object at 310 degrees, and then I'm going to walk towards it. All right, makes sense? Now, let's say that I have done it multiple times. Turn it here. Let's say that I have done it multiple times. Okay, I have followed my direction of arrow. I've looked through my little sight window right there and I have gone to camp, okay? What I'm gonna do is when I'm at camp, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my dial 180 degrees. So I'm now gonna turn it to where it's 130 degrees southeast. Cause see, that's completely the opposite of the way I went in. <clears throat> Close my compass up, go to camp, take a nap, go to sleep, spend the night. And then the next day, I've already got my compass set for 180 degrees so that I can make my way back to where I need to be. All right, clear as mud. Now what that was was called finding a bearing because I had what I wanted to go, okay? Let's say somebody told me, they said, okay, go to the parking lot, park your car, and then get out 310 degrees, okay? So that's finding a bearing. I found uh, where I found, uh, uh, by dead reckoning, I found a tree, walked to it, found several more. So now what I'm going to do is, like, say, if I'm on a trail and I'm wanting to go somewhere and I'm wanting to leave the trail, and I'm going to call somebody and tell them where to leave the trail, now I'm going to show you how you can use this to um, locate a direction. See, the locating and the finding is a little bit different thing. You know, if you know it ahead of time or if you find out what it is. So... Over here, I have an orange vest in the tree, and then I have an orange one over there. And so I'm going to show you how to it's do done that. It's taking about three or four tries because I'm, I'm having trouble lining everything up. But what we're going to try to do is we're going to find a object, and then we're going to find out what its location is. Okay, so now we've got the mirror sitting here so that I can see the dial, and I can see through the little opening right here. Because if I didn't have the mirror, I wouldn't be able to see my compass, and I couldn't hold it up to eye level. All right, so let's turn this thing up where we can see it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to ease along down through here. Now, see that orange vest? Let's say that's an object that I wanted to find out where it was at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ease on over until I've got it in my sights, okay? I see the orange vest right there, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reach up here. And remember, my orange needle or red needle is always pointing towards magnetic north. Now... The orienteering arrow, I'm going to turn. I hope you can see this. This is so hard to get on video. Is I'm going to turn it, keeping my object in line, and I'm going to line it up with, remember, red in the shed. Now I've got it lined up. And I'm still aimed at my object. I'm looking at it again. Let's fine tune it. Okay, so now let's look at it. It's 200 and let's see it's uh, almost west it's 200 and 50 252 254 it's about 250 56 degrees okay so that's that's one way of doing it so now let's let's do another one let's turn this thing back this way so we can see okay now i'm off that object let's go over here and i've got another red <clears throat> another orange vest over here so let's see he's over here. Where's it at? There it is. Okay, there's the other orange orange vest. I gotta move the camera up a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, there it is. Now I've sighted in on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach up here and I'm gonna put Fred in the shed. My magnetic needle is always pointing towards north. So I have spun my bezel until my orienteering needle is lined up with it. And then you just go up here and your direction of travel is at the top. Okay, so now this time it's 332 degrees. And they call that northwest by north. Because it's right in the middle. Alright, now does that make sense? Nick's out here drinking coffee watching me. Say, Hello. say it louder, Nick. Hello. <laughs> so anyway... Now this stuff is very, very extremely hard to film and pay attention to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a real, real quick recap of what this stuff should look like.
Okay. So let's say if you were going to travel north, okay, you're going to line up your magnetic needle with your orienteering arrow. This is your direction of travel. So you're going to line that up and you're going to go in that direction. Let's say that you walked to camp north. Okay. Like I said, you go camp and then when you come home, you're going to go back south. So you run south 180 degrees to your direction of travel arrow. So now you're going to put the red in the shed. Magnetic needle needs to go to your orienteering needle. So what you're going to do now, I have just turned around and I can't see it. You're going to line up your magnetic needle with the orienteering arrow and then that will be your direction of travel. Okay, so then you're going to side off objects with this, this hole right here. Okay, so once again, take it again. You always say it, you always say it. This is your direction of travel. That is where you're traveling. You're going to set it to where you want to go. Okay, so let's say you want to go 320 degrees northwest. What do you do now? Okay, magnetic needle, orienteering arrow. What you're going to do now is you're going to turn it around just like that. And there you go. You've got it lined up. And see, now you're going to be traveling in this direction. Okay, all right. You're going to be at camp, 320 degrees. Okay, if you want to travel back out, what's this back here? 140. Set it to 140 before you go to bed. You ain't got to write nothing down. That way the next day, put the red in the shed. Okay, line your magnetic needle up with your orienteering arrow, and there you go. And that's how you travel your way back out of the woods. Okay, now I have a quick, neat little trick. I got to go back in and show you on the board about this, because hopefully you, you know how to sight in now. You know how to pick out objects and walk to them, okay? This can be some very confusing stuff, and it's honestly confusing for me to even try to film and <laughs> lay this out there. And some of the terminology, it's, it's actually giving me a headache trying to think about what to say, because like finding bearings and locating bearings, okay? Finding a bearing is to where you aim at an object, okay? You're gonna aim at an object, and then you're gonna do what I showed you, where you're gonna turn that dial until the magnetic needle winds up in the red orienteering arrow. And then you'll read direction of travel, okay? That'll be finding a bearing. Now, locating a bearing is where you set this ahead of time and you know where you wanna go, and then you're gonna take it and you're gonna side around until the needle, magnetic needle, winds up in the orienteering arrow. And then you'll be looking through the little window right there, and you're going to know where you're at. Now I'm going to show you a neat little trick. <clears throat> this is so hard to show in real life. So I'm going to show you on the dry erase board. Yeah, I think it's much easier to understand. Alright, so let's go right here. And what we're going to do is let's say that, <clears throat> let's say that here's a, where are you at? Right here. Okay, let's say that right here, here's a tree. Okay, you're standing at this tree, and you're going to go 45 degrees. You're traveling 45 degrees, and you're going to use dead reckoning to find another tree. Okay, you're going to stand in front of it. Okay, you're going to go, here's another tree, 45 degrees. You are now traveling in a straight line. Okay, let's say you run into a lake. Now, how are you going to get around that lake? Okay, here's a big light. You're standing here, and here's a tree right here. Okay, now you're looking over here to the other side, and there's trees all over the place. So how are you going to get around that lake? All right, you may think you can walk around this lake and start going at another 45 degrees, but you want to go in a straight line, so what if you pick the wrong tree? You'd still be going 45, but you would have moved over. So you don't want to do that. So what you want to do is you want to take your compass and you want to side in and you want to pick a tree or a rock or something, something that you know. Let's say that you pick one out and there it is. Okay, so what you're going to do now <clears throat> is you have your compass. Now I'm going to turn this. Let's turn this jewel on right here a minute. 
turn this jewel on right here a minute. Now, let's say that you've got, you were traveling at 45 degrees. Okay, you were traveling at 45 degrees. So what you're going to do now is you're going to look down here and completely opposite of it's 210. So now you're going to put the 210 up here. Man, I should have got my glasses. I can't see anything. This is so blurry. Okay, you're setting this at 210. Just like that. So this is going to be what you're called taking a back bearing. So what you're going to do now <clears throat> is you're going to travel around the lake. And you're going to stand right here in front of this tree. And the tree that you just left. Oh, I forgot to mention, before you leave this tree, take like some toilet paper and tie a knot or tie around that tree. You don't want to leave anything like that's going to stay there forever, like an orange vest or something, or trash. Toilet paper is biodegradable, so that's a good thing right there. So tie you some toilet paper to this branch right here on this tree. And so what you're going to do is now you're going to stand here, and this is called taking a back bearing, okay. and you're going to make sure that you got 210 degrees. Because if you walk around and you're unsure of your tree, let's say if you're standing at this tree, mm -hmm. when you shoot back to that toilet paper or that object, it won't be 210 degrees and you'll know you're wrong. So if you have to, you're going to move around all these different trees and you're going to sight back to this tree. And when you're finally standing in front of the right tree, you're going to know that you're now all in line. And so then you just spin your compass bevel back around, okay? and travel on in your 45 degree fashion. Because you understand what I'm saying, that if you were at the wrong tree, if you just walked around the lake and was at the wrong tree, you would be off parallel. See what I'm saying? You wouldn't be completely in line with where you were going. Okay? Maybe hard to understand, but that's just a neat little something that you, you it helps to know. All right, now, this has absolutely been one of the hardest videos for me to film. Knowing what to say, when to say, how to say it, and relaying it, and thinking, and filming. But I hope you get the basic idea. I hope this helped out. Uh, if, if not, you know, watch, watch some other videos to supplement this one. There may be other people saying things that I'm not saying. And uh, another thing is you can carry two compasses, too, to help build your confidence. Because a lot of people look at a compass, and they'll think to themselves, they'll think, hmm, this is the right way. That can't be right. The compass can't be right. Well, if you carry two of them, how could two of them be wrong? Okay? And remember, keep, keep metal objects away from your compass. So, get out, play around with the compass, get used to it, learn these things. Hopefully, what I filmed outside showed up good, and you can look at it, you can understand. So, basically, uh, just understand your direction of travel, all right? And then understand your orienteering arrow, and then understand your magnetic needle, all right? Later on, once you get com com comfortable with navigating with a compass, you can get into maps and declination and all that. In the meantime, just carry a compass and pay attention to where you go in and how you come out, all right? Sound good? All right, and I shall see you in the next one.